Hi, let's continue our discussion about teaching GIS online with a content management system, in this case eCollege. In previous videos I've discussed the framework for setting all of this up in eCollege. The gradebook, the doc sharing, the Dropbox, the webliography, the faculty information, the syllabus, and the quizzes, labs, etc. that are all part of this course. And I've also talked about weeks one through five in this particular course and what happens in each week. Let's continue that discussion now with weeks six through ten. This is a ten-week course and in each week I have the students discuss topics that I've posed and also reflect upon their work during that particular week. So in week number six what we do is we talk about international spatial data infrastructures. This week we will compare several national data portals as to their ease of use, the amount, currency, quality, and variety of data that can be downloaded from them, and the policies and organizations behind them. So, in more detail, please read the file, Chapter 6 in Doc Sharing. This is the chapter 6 from the GIS Guide to Public Domain Data book, which I have co-authored with Jill Clark. This will provide context and information about international spatial data infrastructures. Number 2. Please access the data from the sites below and use it in ArcMap. And it has to do with national spatial data portals. After Hurricane Katrina and the blatant need for spatial digital data for rescue, cleanup, and future mitigation in the Gulf Coast, historical digital raster graphics were placed on the Geospatial One Stop, originally on geodata.gov, but not part of the larger initiative data.gov, specifically geo.data.gov. Another, another national data portal is from the Land Information New Zealand, lins.gov.nz. Assess the sites above and answer the questions below. Answer the following questions in the discussion forum. Questions 1 through 4 have to do with your Chapter 6 reading, and questions 5 and 6 have to do with your geospatial one-stop and LINS comparison above. From your reading, select two issues surrounding international data, spatial data infrastructures and describe them. Number 2. Describe the major components of a spatial data infrastructure. Why is infrastructure so much more than just data? Number three, why do different countries have different policies concerning access and price on spatial data? Number four, is the U.S. model of free or low-cost government-provided data without copyright commonplace around the world? Why or why not? Number six, how easy was it for you to find the New Orleans historical DRGs on the geospatial one-stop? Number six, Compare the ease of use, the variety, quality, and amount of data that you can access on the Geospatial One Stop versus the data that is accessible from LINS. And here are our discussions about that. Let's turn our attention to Week 7 now. Putting Public Domain Spatial Data to Work. How can Public Domain Spatial Data be put to work? This week you will consider the practicalities of doing so and continue to reflect upon broader issues of metadata and the history and foundations of public domain spatial data in the USA. This week you will have the opportunity, as I said, to reflect upon the relevancy and success of the U.S. National Spatial, da spatial Data Infrastructure, the Federal Geographic Data Committee's mission, consider issues of metadata, and think about putting public domain spatial data to work. Please read Chapter 7 in the GIS Guide to Public Domain Spatial Data. This is our textbook for the course. This will provide context and information about putting public domain spatial data to work. Number 2. Please examine the documents below and reflect upon them in our discussion forum. NSDI and FGDC, Important Acronyms for GIS and Data. Read the FGDC Metadata Fact Sheet and in Doc Sharing or from the Metadata Publications List at fgdc.gov. Number two, read the 10 most common metadata errors in doc sharing or on the FGDC site. What is this doc sharing? This is the place, as I remind you, uh, where I have placed documents pertaining to our course, which is right here. Quizzes, labs, additional documents, presentations, etc. So let's go back to week seven. Read and respond to 
to Executive Order 12906 in doc sharing or on this archives.gov site. Skim and respond to the FGDC framework guide in doc sharing or on this FGDC website. Assess the sites above and answer the questions below. Answer the following questions in the discussion forum. Questions 1 through 2 have to do with your Chapter 7 reading. Chap question 3 has to do with your final project for this course. And questions 4 through 6 have to do with the documents you examined above. From your reading, select two issues surrounding putting public domain spatial data to work and describe them. Number 2. Describe the geographic inquiry process. Number 3. Start thinking about your final project for this course. Describe an idea you have for the final project and how you might put public domain spatial data to work for your project. Now this is week 7, so the final project is due in week 10, so I want them to start thinking about it right here. Number 4. Executive Order 12906 created the National Spatial Data Infrastructure. State in your own words what the NSDI is. Number 5. What are your reactions to the executive order? In your opinion, do you think its 1994 provisions have been realized in 2012? What are some of the barriers to its implementation? What are its advantages if this order is carried out to its fullest extent? Number six, what do you consider to be the main challenges to the work that the FGDC does? What do you consider to be the main benefits to this work? So that's week seven. Let's turn our attention now to week eight. Week 8, the data user as data provider. This week, we will discuss volunteer geographic information in citizen science and their citizen science, all of these impacts on public domain spatial data and the field of GIS. So, you'll be reflecting on your readings and doing the short activity below. I think you can kind of get the pattern here. Each week, I have the students read and reflect, and I also have them do a hands-on activity, whether it's downloading and using some public domain spatial data, or uh, looking at metadata as we see here, but some sort of an active activity. First, please read Chapter 8, which will provide context and information about the data user as data provider. Please examine the document and doc sharing entitled, Good Child Citizens as Censors Volunteer Geographic Information. That's a presentation that Michael Goodchild once gave. Please examine the text below and reflect upon it in our discussion forum. Read the article I have placed in doc sharing of Dr. Michael Goodchild's interview in ArcWatch about VGI. If you are interested, he has an entire paper written about this topic in the VGI Summit from December 2007 online. Read and comment upon the disclaimer for the data you used earlier in the course, City of Boulder, Colorado, and here's their disclaimer. These map products and all underlying data, etc., etc. Read the information above and answer the questions below. Answer the following questions in the discussion forum. Questions 1 through 2 have to do with your Chapter 8 reading. Question 3 have to, has to do with your final project for this course. And questions 4 through 5 have to do with the information you examined above. Number 1. How did the phenomena of the data user as data provider come about? What technological and social factors had to converge to enable this to happen? Number 2. Name two implications that citizen science slash VGI has on data availability and data quality. Number three, thinking further about your final project, describe your project, the issue you are trying to grapple with through this project, and how you think GIS will help you understand the issue. Number four, why do you think the City of Boulder data statements are necessary? Do you think the City of Boulder statements are reasonable? Why or why not? Number five, name one new thing that you've learned about G VGI from the Good Child article and what its implications and what implications it has on the future of GIS. And this is our discussion forum right here below. Let's turn our attention to week nine now. Public domain data on the cloud. This week we will discuss the impact that cloud computing is having and will have on public domain spatial data and our discussion is as follows. Read Chapter 9 in the GIS Guide for Public Domain Data to put the cloud phenomena into the proper context. Number two, consider your reading and consider the documents below when you respond to the discussion forum. And it all has to do with public domain data on the cloud and the future of GIS.
Read the information below. Skimmer read two documents in the general reading section of Doc Sharing. GIS Industry Outlook Beyond 1997 and GIS Industry Outlook Beyond 2007. Both were published in GeoWorld magazine, the first in 1997 looking ahead to 2007, and the second in 2007 looking ahead into the future. Do the following. Go to ArcGIS Online, search for all content, and on Haiti and the Caribbean Plate Tectonics, January 2010, and Historical Map Package. A map package contains data layers and an MXD, packaged in such a way that it will open in ArcGIS Desktop. Open in ArcGIS Desktop, version 10, ideally. Answer the following questions in the discussion forum. Question 1 has to do with your Chapter 9 reading. Questions 2 to 3 have to do with the future of GIS. And questions 4 through 6 have to do with the Haiti 2010 data you accessed above. Name two implications that cloud-based computing has on public domain data and GIS. Number 2. What did the 1997 article mention about spatial data, if anything, and were those predictions met by 2007? I absolutely love going back in time and looking at future predictions, and GIS is no exception. So these articles are fascinating. What does the 2007 article mention about the future of public domain spatial data, and do you think these predictions are accurate? Number four, what is ArcGIS Online? Would you consider it to be GIS data in the cloud? Why or why not? Number five, how easy was it to download and use the map package format from ArcGIS Online? Do you consider this a viable way of serving public domain spatial data? Where does the data in a map package get unpacked to and stored on your computer? 6. Newspaper articles in January 2010 stated that the 7.1 magnitude earthquake that month and its aftershocks were unusual because most historical earthquakes on and near the island of Hispaniola occurred in and northeast of the Dominican Republic. Based on your analysis of the data from ArcGIS Online in ArcMap, would you agree or disagree with the newspaper article? Why? So obviously to answer this question, the students have to have downloaded and used and analyzed that data from ArcGIS Online pertaining to plate tectonics in the Caribbean. Let's turn our attention now to the final week of the course, week 10. The future of public domain data in GIS. In this final, the final, final project is due this week, and I challenge you to pursue this project into the future. Before too much time passes after this course, you might consider giving an informal presentation on your project to at least one of your colleagues, asking for his or her honest feedback. Let's look at the discussion in detail. Final project, the future of public domain spatial data and your future GIS educational journey. Read Chapter 10. Again, this is from the GIS Guide to Public Domain Data about the future of public domain data in GIS. Number two, consider your reading and consider the questions below when you respond to the discussion forum. Please share with the class in the discussion forum. What two items about the future of public domain data from your Chapter 10 reading struck you as the most significant and why? Number two, your assessment of our GIS 4630 course. Were your goals met? What would you like to have spent more time on, less time on? Number three, a one to two paragraph summary of your final research project so that your colleagues can review and comment on it. Feel free to pose questions that you might like their feedback on. Number four, your, your plans for the future in terms of what you will do with GIS. So again, what we have here in this course is a week-by-week -week set of discussions and activities. The activities, let's condense all of these down. The activities varied. There were always, though, an online discussion. Sometimes there was a lab, which is a hands-on exercise. In week one, there was also a course introduction with a video that I included. Week two, for example, you see this online discussion, and there was a quiz. Week three, there was an online discussion and another lab. Week four, an online discussion and a quiz. Week five, online discussion and another quiz and another lab. So in each week, there was something to do. There was always a discussion, and sometimes a quiz, and sometimes a lab. The online discussion had many exercises in it as well, as we have seen. 
reflecting on the readings, but also doing something active. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for listening, and I welcome your comments. Take care. <laughs>